So, as great as this game is, we don't have to talk about it that long, but we were at PAX Unplugged. And well, even before PAX Unplugged, a lot of the enforcers, you know, they scouted out at BGG Con, which was just to make a curated collection and to recommend to you what games to play. No, to get new games that are otherwise unattainable. Yep. Uh, they went to Essen and BGG Con, and the game they raved about that was new and unattainable was Nokosu Dice. So, uh, first look at it Unplugged, was sitting there next to Goats there, and Goats, right there, Goat and Goat. There it was, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, Oats and Goats is the speedrunner. Goat and Goat is the goat game. Yes. So I go and I'm like, well, that's the game that's I can't play otherwise. Let's play it. And we read it. And oh, yep, it is definitely yep. the bomb. Then we played it and it's telling because I kept taking people over there and teaching it to them. I, I was sitting there teaching random people to play it at one point. Uh, I've never played a game in first look like that many times before because usually I go to first look. Well, I usually play it's game. hard to get into first look. Yeah. But if once I play a game in first look, it's like, okay, I know the deal. And then I just like buy the game or something. But it, there were a lot of other games I could have played at PAX. I kept going back over to play Nokosu Dice with different people. So here's the pitch. It is a trick-taking card game. A lot like, you know, Euchre, Hearts, Wizard, Bridge, one of those. So first, I'm going to explain it very briefly the way I would explain it to someone who knows trick-taking games. It's a trick-taking game with Trump. You bid on how many tricks you're going to take, but there's a mechanism for that bidding. You have to follow suit. You do not have to Trump unless you want to. But... You get a hand of cards, and then you draft a bunch of dice, and the dice have the same set of suits as the cards. So my hand might be the four of blue and the two of white and the three of yellow, and in front of me I might have rolled a three of yellow and another three of yellow and a six of blue. Mm -hmm. The cards, And then when it comes around to my turn to play a card into the trick, I could play a card or a die. Scott leads a blue six. That's a die. I play a blue four. That's a card. Emily plays a blue two. That's a die. Like, that's the game. Right. Well, also, the cards go from one to seven. Zero to seven. Zero to, zero the, to seven. Zero to seven. Right. And the and dice the go. the dice go, obviously, one to six. So, the, so if you roll out, if you got a six yellow die in front of you and you push it out... Someone plays a yellow seven. It's like, well, no dice is going to beat that. So here are the other thing, like the final pieces of this. This is like the unique part of well, the game. You got to remember that nokosu in Japanese, I guess, means leftover. It's all about the leftover dice, right? Yep. So when you draft, the, you start by shaking up all the dice and spilling them out. You take a few away. You and then you everyone shake up well, the everyone rest. starts with two random dice, yep. but then you shake the rest. And well, everyone, not all the rest. You leave. You pull a few out. So you it's shake a little different the every rest time. that you're gonna use. Yeah. You and everyone takes them one at a time in a draft, right? And the one that's left over is what, Trump. Whatever number and color that die is is Trump. So if the blue three is left over, blue is Trump and three is Trump. The best way to think of it is that all threes are now also blue. Yep. Except for the blue three, which is now God tier. So this isn't as complex. There are some games that have superior and inferior Trump. The if way you made a video game out of this, what you would do is like if Trump turned out to be blue three, suddenly all the blue cards and all the threes would like turn gold and the blue threes would turn like you know, crazy, right? Like on fire with sparkles, right? Because now they're all in the same suit together. So even yep. a yellow three would be in the same suit as a blue two or a blue one or a yep. blue seven. Now, if you've, a... if you've played a lot of trick-taking games that have complex Trump, then this game, like, it's not a problem. But for any, like we saw, people who have not played games with complex or multifaceted Trumps before had trouble remembering that right. the twos think, were blue and well, the blues were two. Well, I think I had, I had a little... Only a minor amount of. It was trouble. funny. You would fuck it up, well, and we, then you I would explain a, the rule to everyone. And then I fuck understand it up again. the rule perfectly. I think yep. I had. I blame it slightly because we played the original, you know, from the box, Noko, official Nikosi dice, and I only had a tiny bit of trouble. We only messed it up a little bit. We've been. We got, obviously the game. Is, I made an Airsats version right. of this game out of some Shikeln cards, right. And the, a bunch of dice. The game isn't out yet, right? Uh, you can pre actually there's a, there was a pre order that sold out within a day. Now there's there, another pre order. There's gonna be another pre order tomorrow. So we'll, I'm getting in on it. We'll post the link for that pre order for anybody if you can go. Yeah, if fast it's not enough. clear how excited we are, this game is a must buy. Yeah, and it's gonna be super cheap. Uh, but anyway. Uh, we played with Rim's like hack together copy using whatever dice. Now I know what you're about to say, but I looked at the pictures of the real cards and real dice and my copy. There is no material. Yeah, difference. I couldn't. I can't tell you a specific difference between them that was meaningful. So I, but so, but 
We did mess it up more with the put together copy I than the original. I think I figured one. out why. I was thinking about that a lot. When we were playing it in first look. I can't tell you why because it looks the same to me. When we were playing it in first look, we played it super slow because we had all just learned it. And every time we played it, we played it again super slow. And everyone was like paying 100% attention. And at MAGFest, I just kept buzzing out on the table all the time. I played it like seven or eight times. It could be. Who knows? And I kept playing it with random groups of people. But we played it more like we play Wizard or like normal games. Right. Like people get distracted or talk so anyway, to each other. anyway, you, you deal out the cards. You get two random dice. You draft the rest of the dice. The last but die. When you're drafting, there is an odd number of dice so that such that there is going to be one die left over after everyone is drafted. That die is the Trump die. Yep. Right? Then you play the game, and what happens is that, you know, the leftover dice, right? Yep, so you've got but five then dice in front of you, you and start, a hand of cards. You start taking tricks, right, as you would in a normal trick-taking game, must follow suit. So if I play blue, everyone, you know, has to play blue if they have it. Otherwise, they don't. Uh, and if you don't, you can play Trump unless Trump was led, in which case, follow with Trump. Yep. If a lot of situations come up where... You have you don't want to follow, and you don't have a card to follow with, but you have a die to follow with. You have to follow with the die because a die is just a card in your hand. So if I see that Scott's got a yellow die, and I'd like I'm worried that he might be desuited. I know he's not desuited in yellow. Well, if if you know that like blue is Trump, and you see Rim has a bunch of blue dice in front of him, it's like well. <laughs> It's like part yep. of his hand, part of everyone's hand is just open, but only part of their hand is open. So here's the final like magic right. that makes this work. Right. So after you you play, you keep taking tricks, and eventually, at some point, you each player will have one die left. You don't get to play that die. That die goes aside, and now whatever the f number value is on that die, regardless of color is your bid. So, so if Scott has a six and a one in front of him, and I play a card that forces him to play the six, his bid becomes one, which might totally fuck right, him. Right, so that bid is you're trying to p win exactly that number of tricks. So if you're winning a lot of tricks, you want to have a die with a high value on it and not use that die. You want to set that die aside. Also, if you mode, take more than six tricks, you can never be correct. Your maximum bid is six, but there are 15 tricks in a round. Yep. Also, 14, 14. Before you start, after you draft, but before you start taking tricks, you can say, hold up, I want to bid zero, in which case you just pick one of your die and set it aside. Yep. And now you just play the turn normally and you're trying to take zero tricks. But obviously, if you take even one, you've missed. So the game is not as punishing as Wizard because Wizard, you only get points if your bid was right. correct. Right. When you play a game like Wizard, if you need to be correct. But in Wizard, you can bid any number. It's way easier. Yeah. Right? You need to be exactly correct. Otherwise, you lose points. Here, it's way harder to be exactly correct because you have less control over your bid. Yep. But if you fail to get the be exactly right you still always get one point for trick you take so it's like okay uh, my bid was wrong but guess what i took 10 tricks 10 points now it's pretty you, good if you bid zero and get zero you just get 10 points but if you're the only one who was correct in your bid you get 40 bonus you get a ton of bonus points right i forget exactly how many i think it's 40 30 or 30 right. 20 10 40, right so you get 10 like bonus points for bidding zero and being correct on top of the points for being the only person who's correct yep so if you bid zero and you're the only one who was right you get a shit ton of points if everyone's correct they just get the tricks they took so it's more like a traditional trick taking game in that jet taking tricks can never hurt you too much it just might deny you bonus points right it can't harm but, the, but you. the bonus points are so large that that's that's how to win you're not going to win if nope. you don't get the bonus points unless everyone is so good that nobody ever gets bonus points or everybody always gets bonus points because which means which is the same as everyone never getting bonus points yep right so if no one ever gets bonus points then it will just come down to who took the most tricks there's one last nuance that makes the game work because unlike a normal trick taking game there can be ties the only other game that can have ties is Wizard, or at least major tricking games, where multiple Wizards get played. And Wizard, whoever played the first of those, gets the trick. In this game, whoever, if there's a tie of what's winning the trick, the last card among the tied cards wins the trick. Right. So if Scott plays a super high trump, and I tie his trump, but I go after him, I take it. 
It's easier to yep. take tricks. It's harder to duck. Right. So there's a lot of difficult situations where, you know, it's like even though people's hands are half open, you just see their dice in front of them. More like a third open. You have five dice in front of you right. and you have 14 but cards. But there'll in, be a situation. Let's say, blue, let's let's say blue is Trump, right? And Rim plays. Rim starts it off with a yellow two. And yep. it's like, all right, I have no yellow. I'm de-suited in yellow. I'm going to play my Trump. And then I look around the table and I see the person next to me just has like a fucking way more powerful Trump just on their die facing up. Right, if it was Wizard or some other trick taking game, I would have just played my Trump like bam. But I can see a card or a die at least that beats my Trump just right there. I can just see it. And it's like, well, I guess I'm not playing this. Yep. And because. Uh, but it's like, well, piece. what are you going to do? It's like, you wait. It's like, yeah, it'll still be there ready to beat you later. <laughs> it's not like it's suddenly going to go, yep. right? It's like you got to wait for them to somehow use it before you use yours. It's like if you're playing Wizard. Good luck with that. It's, it's like you're playing Wizard and one person is just playing hand open. You just see the Wizard sitting there the whole time. It's like, how are you going to beat it? You see it. That doesn't help <laughs> That doesn't help you, <laughs> right? It's like, yeah, you, you see it. Can you beat it? No. So in, and, and to make matters even more fun, the Trump power order is... First, the the item, the card or die that matches both the color and the face value of the Trump is the Super Trump. Right. So yellow. Where we've been, we started right. calling it the Bauer, uh, named after you. But Uker. anyway, the blue three is Trump. Therefore, the there is one card that is the blue three. That is the strongest card. Yep. Now but we, there could be several other d- dice that are also blue threes. Yep. That are all equally strong. So after that. All the things that match the face value of Trump, so all the threes. Right, the yellow e- three, the green three, yep. the red three, all the other threes. They're equally powered are, and slightly less powerful than the, the one that matches right. both. So blue three is the strongest. Yellow three, green three, red three are all str- equally strong to each other, but subservient to the almighty blue three. And then it's numbers down from there. So then the blue seven, right, blue all, six, blue five, blue right, four, all the blue, blue, two, blue one, Anything blue that's blue that's not a three comes after that. So all these factors combined make this like one of the better trick-taking games I have ever played. Oh, yeah. This There's just game, so much going on. You would have to play this for a hell of a long time to yep. have any sort of mastery on it. And, and even if you not start only, to master and, it. Right, but even with the mastery, there's so much not luck, right? There is a little bit of luck against the random dice yep. you pull from the bag. The two random dice that are yours and yours alone for each round. But the draft, you just get such a different game every t- round it's completely different what's going on yeah, imagine hearts with like drafting like whoa it's like different crazy stuff happens each time because your different colored dice come out a different one is trump it's a different person goes first you know you draft differently based on the cards and dice you because ha- you already see your hand and your two starting dice before you start drafting yep so that changes everything so it's like it's so fresh and does not get stale at all. Yep. And the, so, they, and this is where credit to the designer. This is a Japanese game. Uh, Yusuke Matsumoto is the designer. Genius. And this game, I think, is going to open up a whole... I think a lot of people are going to start designing trick-taking games, borrowing from this, because my stupid brain had never considered just making dice and using them in a trick-taking game like this. That's really the genius mechanic is, yeah, the dice are also cards. Yeah, like... And this game is three or four player only, I feel like it really only works with four. I think it, I would also only play with four. We'll three, try it with three. Three could be okay. Because three-player hearts is great. Yeah, two and five is right out. Yeah, not even allowed. No. But four-player gives this game the opportunity to mod this game in the sense that I feel like you could very easily make this a partnership game, and it would be great. You could, maybe. Because Wizard, as much as I love it, you can't easily make it a partnership game for a lot of reasons I don't have time to describe. I'd rather play a different game that is meant to be a partnership game. Yeah, but I feel like this could work as a partnership game. I want to play with it. I think a lot of clever people are going to play this game once, go, oh shit, and you're going to see a lot of games. You could literally just say, all right, play the game normal four player, and then. You add your score to the person across from you, and then there's only two teams. Yep. And that's the only change you make is, yeah, just your your partners with the person across from you, and you add your scores together at the yep. end. Yep. And then, and you then ba- so you can you have a you can basically have a instead of a 25 percent chance of winning, you now have a 50 percent chance of yep. winning. But then you got to also to make it fun, ban table talk and yeah, I, I just I'm happy to just play four player. I don't feel yeah. the need to mod. Well, I don't anything. feel the need to mod anytime soon because. I am nowhere near being a master of this game, Not obviously. Even close. Not that I'm even a master of Wizard. I think I'm near a master at, what, Hearts, 
Euchre, and the list drops off pretty quick after that when it comes to trick-taking games. Mm. Moo still can't fucking play well. Like, I, my, my skill at Moo is just random. I feel like there's no reason to play Moo if you have a Nikosu dice. Well, I think Moo brings different, more things. Like, Moo is very... I'm not saying it's similar, right? It is very different and Moo crazy. Moo has a more complex but, trump. Moo has a superior and an inferior trump. And yes, Moo is a coalition I, game, but it's coalitions formed in the course of bidding. I'm aware, but the point is, is that in terms of I'm in the mood to play a, you know, a kind of meaty trick-taking game and not just a sort of baby one, it's like I'd always rather play Nikosu Dice than Moo. So even though they're mechanically not equivalent and there's reasons for them both to exist... There's just no situation where I would feel like playing this kind of game and choose Moo over Nikosu Dice. See, I would, but I'm way more into trick-taking games than you are. I'm pretty into trick-taking games. Yeah, you want to play Euchre with me? No, it's a stupid game. Why, fine. why would I play Euchre when I can play Nikosu Dice? Want to or- play Whist? No, it's a stupid game. So you like trick-taking games? I like more trick-taking games than you. I, just, I would rather, but Nikosu Dice is just better, and it it serves the same purpose. So, But I guess the the real thing I would say is that you're asking me to go eat at, like, you know, uh, McDonald's when it's like, but I have meat right here. I could make a delicious burger on the grill. Why would I go to McDonald's? No, McDonald's will be playing straight whist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like there's no purpose, even though, right? Now, McDonald's would be playing Go Fish and calling it a trick-taking game. <laughs> you get the idea. But I guess... In terms of trick-taking games, Wizard is still the one to use to get your friends who have never played a trick-taking game to try them out and realize they yeah, like Yeah, Nikosu them. Dice is not an entry level, right? You need to understand too many different game yep. things. It's not that it's hard where it's pro gamers Good only. Good lord, I taught this to someone who didn't know how trick-taking games work. That is real fucking hard to do. Right, it's just that you really, you know, if you want to be able to play this well and not be confused all the time... You know, you Learn need to. Hearts you first. already need hearts. to understand just the concepts of drafting and yep. trick taking. So it's like if you haven't played any drafting or trick taking games before, go play Sushi Go Seven Wonders. You know, Wizard Hearts. Yep. Go play those to learn. Under right, it's not. This isn't some advanced crazy game only for geniuses. It's just as in the complete entry level can be confusing if you don't have the the previous prerequisite yep. knowledge. So if I had to say like the mind feels or the moods I'm in to play trick-taking games, if I want a very pure game, I'll still just go to Hearts. Hearts is my go-to. That game is great. Mm-hmm. If I want uh, an interesting experience that's really going to pull me in right now, no Kosu dies because there's nothing like it. If I want an elevated partnership nonsense game, I'll play Moo. And if I just want any trick-taking game, I'll default to Wizard because Wizard does take more players than Nokosu dice. Yeah, I guess the, that's the time to play Wizard is if you have five, six people. Yep. And honestly, Wizard's not as fun with four players unless it's four people who no, are no, no, semi- no. Who are like- all, Wizard is definitely the best with more players because there's fewer rounds. When you yep. play Wizard with too few players, there's too many rounds. It takes too long. Yep. Now, I do like that, but if I'm going to play Wizard with four players... I kind of want to play Hearts more because Hearts is more pure, and despite like Hearts will go faster in the end. For hearts, a lot of heart, well, Hearts is way faster. Yeah, well, unless someone won't take their turn, but that's a different problem. How could you not take your turn in Hearts? It's I've so, known so, some so people. simple. Well, when we played Hearts for money in middle school, some people would take a long time on their turn. Uh-huh. We we're playing for like pennies. We weren't uh, yeah. <laughs> we weren't high rollers. But Nokosu dies. Like I cannot stress enough, it was for us. And for a lot of people in tabletop and first look, like the breakout game of PAX Unplugged, I practically guarantee it's going to be in first look at PAX South. And you should. I don't know if it will be, but we'll have our made-up copy. Yeah, I'll bring the Ersatz copy. The the pre-order will not have arrived yet. Yep. 